feeling of these boats going through the water is just solidarity itself. She's, she's pretty magnificent and really something to see. But this is the lap of luxury, serious blue water. Go anywhere in the world with a puppy. The varnish work is just brilliant. This is a true yachtsman's yacht. This is just elegant, just magnificent. Everything is just super, super nice down here. This is like walking into Tiffany's, isn't it? Hi there, this is Captain Q and my old sailing buddy, Randy. Join us as we travel hither and yon as we look for some great deals on classic boats and learn a little with each one. Hey, Captain. Oh, Randy. I see the shoes. Oh, how can you see my shoes? And the pants. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you are. Okay, buddy. Uh, I was just looking at this boat. This is a really nice boat right here. You know what this is? Uh, I know it's a Hinkley of some kind. This is a Hinkley 42. Ah. And uh, it'd be nice to take a look at this today, wouldn't it? It would, yeah. These but are... we're not going to, no. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. You we're, but me. we are going to use this as a bit of a stable mate, uh, if you will, for another boat. Okay. A little Harbor 42. Oh. Interestingly enough, our friend Ted Hood, uh, and we've talked about Teddy, haven't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what boats did we like of his before? Oh, we love the Little Harbor 46. Yeah. Uh, we love Firefly. So we're going to look at a, uh, a, a, a 1990 42. And this is, a, um, this is a limited edition boat. You know, so many boats we see, they produce 30, 40, 50, 100 of them. This is one of six. Okay. And this actually is the last one. And the unique thing about this boat, aside from uh, Ted's um, design and concept uh, for wetted surface and, and uh, sailing capability, is that this is really designed for somebody who wants to be a, a, a solo sailor and just do everything by themselves, and they're going to do it the best way I like. What do I like to do the most? Sit at the wheel. Got it. <laughs> yeah. I have this wonderful comparison of two boats, uh, two different designers. On my left side, we have Blue Hawk, a 42-foot Ted Hood designed fiberglass boat built in 1990. And on the right, we have a uh, Hinkley 41 uh, built about the same time. But it's just interesting to see because Ted really left the main track of design. The, the flat side with almost a hint of tumble home is obvious on the Hinkley, right? Yep. And then it comes down, and when you get down to the waterline, the chine, uh, it, it rolls out a little bit and then starts to come under. Now what that's doing is giving this boat uh, a whole lot of extra um, wetted surface. She'll stiffen up at around 15 degrees or so, uh, but it's gonna take some breeze to get her over. Now, what Ted decided after working on 12 meter designs for a number of years, he realized that uh, you don't need all this extra line in here. So he's basically done that diagonal that I talked about in a way and just brought it straight down. So he's lost a lot of wetted surface and these are designed to go right to 15 degrees and stop. And then when you've really got to go to weather, there is a centerboard uh, that will give you, take up to about, a, this is about four foot six draft and it goes up to about 11 foot of draft going to weather. And this is a uh, foil shaped board, not just a flat piece of metal. It's a real foil. So you're gonna have the effect of a, of a you know, uh, a foil keel. The feeling of these boats going through the water is just solidarity itself. So working our way around the boat a little bit, Randy, I'm finding a little hole here. That almost looks like a propane vent to me. A little partial skeg here, but it's a partial balanced rudder. Uh, with uh, this part being able to help you steer the boat. It's got a nice little pin here, huh? We, we've seen that before? Oh, uh, yeah. That's, that's going to stop a couple of pots. The engine exhaust right there, most likely because of the staining around it. Yeah. As we move up our starboard side, uh, here's a little intake for... Uh, I'm going to guess that's for the engine because it's, uh, it's the only thing set up like that with a little strainer for, for, for big chunks like wood and chunks of seaweed. Yep. Free blade maxi prop. And notice we've got the, uh, uh, the zinc coating on this. This happened as a result of the wastage 
from his zincs up here. It's got a, a pretty healthy line cutter there. We've got a big ground plate here for his uh, electronics. Coming forward, pretty clean everywhere, isn't it? Uh, everywhere we look. And we get up to the bow, and here's our old underwater porthole. <laughs> uh, this is all fiberglass, and it's Airex um, cord from the uh, bottom right up to within six inches of the deck. And the deck is a divine cell cord. Two different core structures. Right, right. Two different materials in the core. Yeah. Uh, his bow is interesting. This will give him a little bit more of a bite coming into a wave. Now, the uh, Hinkley over the side of us is more spoon-like, but it comes down and just a full sweep downward. This, this has this little notch here, which is probably going to give him a little bit more waterline length when she heals over. So she's pretty magnificent and really something to see. But what do you say? Can I take your topside? Yeah, stairway to heaven. Hey, Randy. Hey. Come on and join, come on and join Sea Dog and me up here. Oh. This is the lap of luxury. You know, I, we, we spoke to the, uh, the broker on this boat and he's, he's a gentleman who's almost as uh, mature as the captain here. But he said, this is the one boat uh, at his mature stage he has lusted for, I think was his phrase. Yep. And I said, John, why is that? Why is that? And he said, because you know, you can sit back here and you can drive the whole boat by yourself. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, you've got uh, uh, electric outhauls for the uh, in-mast uh, furling main. Yep, so then the you, outhaul pulls the furled main the out. The outhaul will pull it right out to the end of the boom. Okay. And I don't have to go in because those buttons are right here. And you can see where they, they come up out of the deck. There's a couple of, uh, uh, there's a messenger in the one. And there's another line here that'll be for the jib sheet itself. So I'll haul that out and the mainsail comes all the way out to the end of the boom. And then I'm gonna crack off the sheet a little bit, so I'll head off and fill the main. Got the roller furling right here, so you can let that out, and then when you wanna take it back in, you'll use this and crank it right back in. So two-speed uh, winches, bearing 32s, and if you wanna tack, you just throw the line off on that side, wrap it around here, and then here's your trim buttons. Something else I see about, uh, especially Hood's boats, always sticks with me, is the way he designs his cockpits for comfort. Uh, this is a little mini couch effect, so right here, you're kind of sitting back, this catches you down low, but you're very comfortable. Uh, he does leave um, a space here for, you know, to sit on the rail if you want to really do hard driving and watch that Jenny. Pretty comfortable too, it's wonderfully balanced hull design. A couple of fingers on this this beautiful wheel. Everything is beautiful on this boat. Just, I mean, it's, it's, this is like walking into Tiffany's. Don't you just love it? Love what? Tiffany's. Say I'm sailing along on, on this particular starboard tack and I'm looking up at the jib and it looks like I really want to uh, pull that uh, fair lead for the jib aft. Well, there's a number on the track up there and it's going to be probably something like, you know, 22. So we'll move the car on the other side not while it's under low, but on the other side to 22. Then when we tack the boat, it'll be right where we want it. And then as we're sailing along on the port tack, this side, uh, I will kindly, well, since I'm here, I'm by myself, I'll just go put this on autopilot, walk up to the port side, adjust that car to number 22, and be ready for the next tack and have the sail just the way I want it. Set tees here, again with the little couch effect at the back end gives me plenty of leg room and I'm not even, I could fall asleep here. Be slick. The uh, steering system is all Edson, this beautiful Edson wheel uh, and drive and so forth. The throttle and gear mechanism is right here and I believe this is all in one. So you've got uh, you know, like the other Morse style where you push it forward, push it further forward and you go faster and faster, back, go reverse and nice so and on. Nice and simple, yeah. Engine instrumentation all under glass, and almost eight inches Ritchie compass. And this is huge with big, bold white numbers. It has a B and G uh, navigation system with the Hydra system down here. Here's a control panel for that uh, down below. And right underneath your foot there, Randy, you'll find your ab builder. No, There's, bicep builder. The varnish work in, in, in on this boat is just, it's just brilliant. It's an ice box. It's a place for the water to drain out. Uh, put a couple of uh, sodas up there. Propane. That is where those, the drain hole was. And that's where the drain hole was. Yeah, exactly. Wow. We've got a bilge pump handle. 
I like that way that's stored. That's nice and efficient. It, it is, isn't it? And there's two of them. Uh, Just in case. And I don't know that there's a second bilge pump up here, but I think it's in case you drop one over the side. Let's see what they gave us on the other side. We have a nice place to put your boom bang strap. You drop this over the boom, like so, and then put your shackle in here, and then tie it off to the rail. So the boom, the boom will be kept at one level because of the vang, but the vang doesn't stop it from swinging one way or the other. Let's see what, what they give us here. That... So they've used this for just line storage and fender storage. And I, look how immaculately clean this is. And this boat again was born in 1990. Yeah. Yikes. Whoop. And it's... <laughs> what do you think that's for? You know what this is for? Somewhere on this boat is a chair and there's a, a, a leg, single leg, and that's why this is so solid. Nice touch. Man of our board sling. This is a little tired. This, I think we might <laughs> give him a minus oh. a quarter point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, How about this fair leads? But he's got the new modern blow up version over here. So uh, we'll, we're, we'll, we're back to square. We'll, we'll leave that one. Now here's something I really like. I'm not nuts about fold-down transom ladders, you know, I, I prefer the side, yep. good old wooden one, but they've put wooden steps on here. These things hurt like crazy, so putting a real wooden step on there is, is primo. Oh, gosh, it's just more jewels, just more jewels. Do you think Tiffany's would really engrave it for us? We have a, 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 a bimini back here that's going to flop up, and actually, on this particular boat, with the forward dodger up, uh, you'll be able to enclose this whole cockpit. Let's just see what we have for cockpit storage here. Oh my gosh. Uh, just voluminous, dry, nice locker. We're just massively built, and these things weigh a ton. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Tell me about this uh, slotted groove here, and then this other little cubby. Oh, well, this is what we were talking about before. Okay, so this would be the main sheet, and it's just been pulled off for the winter because they've taken the boom off and all the rigging with it. So they tied the end of the main sheet to this. When, when they're ready, they'll tie the main sheet back to the other end of it and pull it through there, and the whole thing's under deck. And I believe the fair lead for the general sheets are gonna go through these blocks right here these giant Harkins. I mean, here's your parent wind indicator. You can see that right from the helm. And here's part of the hydro system. This will be a select station. It'll tell you probably the depth, boat speed. The other side, uh, this is a Furuno system. Everything, the hydra is all linked into it. And you'll have your radar, GPS, uh, AIS. Now, would you like to take a look forward? I sure would. Everything on board here is stainless on the deck. So, uh, and it's polished stainless too. Polished stainless, High polished, right. yeah. Just, just polished stainless. I'm sitting on a very nice teak seat, which I'll show you in a minute when I get up. Um, we have uh, the anchor uh, set up on a, a, Max, on a Maxwell, um, what are we gonna call that today? Uh, this week it's a capstan. Two nice uh, cleats, the fair leads for them. The chalks are just massive. Just nothing, you know, you could hoist the boat on these things. Yeah, the whole nose piece is beautiful. Isn't it fabulous? I'll get up and show you your seat if you'd like to try it at some point. Yeah, of course. Uh, we've got a chain stopper down here too, this little guy. So that'll drop down and keep this chain from, from, from pulling out, okay? Big stainless double rollers with a, a phenolic of some sort uh, roller under there uh, to catch a slightly, slightly different, uh, anchor there, I'm not certain. And the one on the front there, what is that R? It's a Bruce, and this uh, is another chain hoss pipe? Yeah, that's certainly what it looks like, uh, but I'm not certain, we'll have to look below and see what that, what that feeds, what feeds down to that, okay? And we'll do that by checking this hatch. I think this is open, there we go. So, ah, this is, uh, this is your crew quarters, Randy, remember we said you could have this? Yeah. Uh, I might even get a pillow. You see the end of this pipe down here that we're talking about a minute ago, and that's just feeding line coming down. You could feed just line going into that one. Okay. Not for chain, just for rope. Well, it's got the cap on it like it's for a chain. Uh, well, it, it, it actually, if you have, if you have a, a rope anchor line, what we did 
and I think a lot of people still do, you'll have the first, oh, 12, uh, 14 feet aft of the anchor will be chain. Yep. Then you reach your one inch or seven eighths inch nylon three strand, which is the max, uh, that's, your, that's your real anchor line. So when you get, take that all and through, the last little piece of chain will get anchored right here. Gotcha, okay. So you can reach it and hook it up. It has a major wind scoop. These things, the size and the shape of these really move air. Here we've got our uh, chain plate for uh, the interstacial. And if you want to carry a double head rig, you can carry it on the boat. Also, we're standing on beautiful teak. And this is teak we've seen before. It's, it's all been fastened from above because we can see the uh, bungs. Not one bung has, has any rust showing out of it. Do you like these combings? Oh yeah. Is that gorgeous? Well, it's a tow rail. I do like these tow rails. <laughs> Aren't these tow rails gorgeous? The stanchions I love. I love looking at the big ball on the top here. Yeah. You know, if you put your hand on that, some of the ones that come on boats now, you're gonna go right through your palm. We have a lovely boat hook here. We've not seen a custom boat no. hook mount like this. Is that handsome? Yeah. Look at that, all set up. Uh, it's a piece so of right through. And you're getting nervous, aren't you, with me? <laughs> Look at that, I've never seen a head like that. That's been fabricated and, and it has a matching little seat for it. Tell me about the stainless hatches. Those are all hood fabrications, I believe, because all the ports are as well. And they're just solid. They're, they all have four dogs to them, which are the, the, the levers below decks that will lock it in place. And this little track right here, is for a Dodger. Sea Dog wants to head below. All right. All right. So, so, do, so do I. Follow us. And here's something I like too. Um, there's so many things you like on these boats. It's so easy. Look at this railing. Now, I might even call this handicapped equipped, right? But you come out of the cockpit and you'll have a Dodger standing up here somewhere. And I won't pull it all the way up. Uh, and you can grab that and kind of work around it. But when you get up here, there's not much to grab onto. So this has been fabricated in here, and I like this a, a whole lot. That's, that's a great, great arrangement. Now I'm going below. All right. Now you can follow Let's me. Let's do it. Brandy. Hey. It's like being in a, an old Harishoff uh, built boat with the, the white and the, against the uh, uh, teak trim and so forth, except it's brand new. This is a really comfortable settee right now. I've got a couple cushions behind me. Nice storage. Look at, look at the varnish everywhere. The ceilings on here are painted. The, the paint finish on here is, is right up there at the top of the list. These are hood ports, and Ted had those fabricated and designed originally because he couldn't find anybody that designed a port that would cant out and let water drain off the bottom part of the outside of the port light. Finish on the, on the overhead here, uh, everything is just super, super nice down here. The, uh, all the cushions, as usual, as we peel these back and Velcro noise out, and little latches. Uh, now, here's a chain plate for you. How do you like that? Oh, yeah. Is that massive? That's and that's just for the lower. Yeah. So, I'm sure uh, what we have on the upper, let's see if we can take a peek at that for the fun of it. Oh, <laughs> that's even bigger. This boat is a myriad of details. So, Randy. This is a really comfortable uh, seating area and, and entertainment area in the boat. Uh, you've got dinner being prepared over there. You've got a nice, this is a, I don't know, is this an eight foot couch? It looks really long and beautiful storage. Handrails, we like handrails on boats, don't we? Seems like there's a, a handrail every two feet. Every place you need one. You can sort of swing along here like, you know, sort of a monkey. I've managed to swing myself down to the galley. Stainless sink, a really nice deep one here, number one. It's filled with a strainer for your seawater and your, uh, this is a little strainer for your freshwater filter. And you should check that once in a while. It's a little plastic bowl that's screwed onto a plastic base. And inside of that will be this little fine strainer, which takes out anything that's decided to grow inside your water tank. Nice uh, modern accoutrement here. Stainless uh, wash pan, tidy storage everywhere, nice little twist handles that open up. We have a uh, microwave. A four burner microwave. You've got more storage here, food storage. 
We've got two different gauges here. One is for two separate sides of, of your refrigeration, which is 12 volt on here, I believe. And uh, one will be for your freezer and one will be for your refrigeration side. What's the vent here? This is, this is an exhaust vent for the stove. Okay. I'm also noticing something for the chef. For the chef? Yeah. Okay. For the chef, you would have noticed windows, port lights. What's in between them? Uh, oh my gosh. I just saw that out of the corner of my eye. I have done some chef work. Hold on a second. Do oh. you have any feeling in your face? Just in this one spot right here. There, there we go. go. There okay. Go. Got everything trimmed up there. That's a first. Yeah. That's really a first. The uh, refrigeration system, massive. This is the thickest we've seen yet. Huh. Well gasketed. Seems we've empty. got little bins down there. Seems empty. And it is empty. And the freezer side, you can see the big holding plates down in there. Why don't we take a look at the uh, engine room here? Uh, couple pieces here. That's your 52 horsepower uh, Westerbeek. Okay, and then your next gen generator. The next gen generator right behind it in its own soundproofing case. It's a little tight, but there are also side hatches on the uh, starboard side. But this is also, it turns out, a V-drive. Those are the cooling lines that we've got. See, she's coming straight off the engine. That's the coupling off the back end of the uh, transmission. Okay. Right down here, the red piece. Yep. Two rake oars, too. Pretty tidy though, isn't it? This is one of the first quarter bursts that really makes sense to me. What's my complaint? <laughs> Getting uh, into the berth, right? Yeah. And the gymnastics. Uh, Ted, again, uh, was not a small person. And look, I can sit right down on the edge of this berth and I'm gonna swing my feet right up and put them up here and I've got access to the engine room. There's little bags in here. Each bag has a separate uh, screen. And remember how many how many um, hatches we saw? What yeah. five, five or so hatches? They're all in a nice little zippered bag in their own little hatch locker. Place to hang some foul weather gear if you wanted to right here, which is nice. Uh, binocular box handy, an air horn handy, uh, and a little more air here for the. And if, if you hang your fowlies, look where it, it drains to. Well, exactly, yeah, right down here below my feet. And I'll move my feet because I'm going to lie down for a minute. Great little flag locker. So when you want to dress ship for any occasion or send signals to somebody on a destroyer who's coming to get you, you can send the right signals here. This is a true yachtsman's yacht. We better keep going before we lose you. Okay, here we go. I'll get out, but look, easy swing off. And I've got handles. I've got handles everywhere because they just called me on watch and I spring up and I, you know, head right up topside. Or I sit down at the nav station. You've got single sideband, you've got VHF with an AIS on here. Here's all your, your, your uh, electricity panels, a nice little chart light, your GPS, uh, hydro system repeaters, perfect size nav station, got a nice fiddle on it. Should we take a look? Yep. You ready? Yep. Okay. Ta-da! Oh, wow. <laughs> you think like the little drawer down here, didn't you? I just throw that. It's all these little details. And this comes out on, on double sliders, like you'd find at home, so it's just whoop, in and out. I'm gonna get out of here and head forward. What do you think? All right. Let's just take a look at the bills down here and see what we see. These are, this is one of three uh, 8D batteries. Those weigh about 130 pounds each and probably gives you about, uh, oh, uh, 600 amp hours or so or more. Door number one or door number two? I'll go one. Just one? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, this mirror finish on it. Look at that. Is that beautiful? Ooh. Looks like a, I'm not gonna say a hotel. This is just elegant. Uh, uh, Ted didn't do my head the right way. He didn't agree with you. No, but I'm gonna suffer with it because he's done everything else so darn perfectly, hasn't he? Uh, and who doesn't have a teak varnished um, sink basin, huh? Well, that's hot water, cold water, and then soap is on this side. Now, you also have in here your handheld shower. It's gonna clip into this piece up here. But the nice thing about it, too, it can also be used as a... Oh, a bidet. Yep, yeah, you yeah. have it right handy down here for the, for the head and so forth. Um, for anybody that just needs to tidy up a little more completely without maybe having a whole shower. Uh, nice touch. That's pretty great for a long offshore passage. It is, too, right? it, it is, really is. Uh, you've got a double shelf arrangement here, and it's all behind the slanted mirror. But I'll see you later. Nope. <laughs> yeah, okay. Too bad. You can come in. 
Okay, master stateroom. We have a filler, the filler pieces here. And again... I get scared on these Ted Hood boats. <laughs> guess what's under this piece? Nothing. Nothing. A little storage down here for you, Randall. Look at that. Okay. Oh, some tankage. So you can take this cushion and set it down there like so, which I like for an arrangement initially. Yeah, putting your boots on and stuff. I'm also noticing the headroom throughout here. There's a lot of headrooms. Yeah, Ted, especially Ted, in the V-berth. Ted was, Ted was tall and the V-berth area are big. Um, lockers, big hanging lockers. Look at this. I mean, what would you say this, the headroom is here, like 6'5"? Oh, where am I? Yeah, 6'5", maybe right under, yeah. without, un, without being under the hatch uh, itself. And of course, you have a little privacy covers. How do you like that? I like that, yeah. It's, it's uh, all cedar lined, why not? Uh, a nice dry locker for your dry goods. Just tons of locker space again um, to go offshore. And they've got uh, additional storage here. Oh, you know what? Uh-oh. I found the emergency drawer. Oh my gosh. Uh, what do you say? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know. Now, one thing, oh, <laughs> the pillow comes flying in. Before I go to pillow, you got to check this out. Oh. Is that, that's an all, <coughs> that's the all time biggest, I think. Uh, we've seen bigger, but. Oh, uh, really? Well, no, triple, I mean, look, yeah. this goes to my feet, oh, right yeah. to the top of my head, so I can be perfectly quaffed and perfectly, you know. Like today. Ready to go. Yes, exactly. <coughs> now, I'm going to just flip into this berth, the heel of my shoes, dry as a bone, and get comfy. This is so much easier if I could do this without my microphone. Randy, can we arrange that sometime? Nope. But I like this uh, coziness. And I'm, I'm sitting in a boat that, oh, what is this way? Uh, oh, gosh. 27,000 pounds, I think. And uh, about uh, 11,000 in, 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 in lead. I might be off a little bit on those numbers. But uh, I'll let you think about those numbers while you take a little snooze. Uh, thanks for joining me on this. 1990 hood uh, little harbor uh, boat. I was, hey, I was talking to you. Too bad. Hey, Randy. Oh, hey, oh. Today we had a chance to look at a little harbor, another Ted Hood design. And we've, we've really been uh, entranced by Ted's work and the design concepts. And today we learned a lot about the delta function of the design of the underbody on the boat. Uh, it's pretty fascinating. A lot of stuff I did not know about and why they were done the way they were done. The interior of this boat was just pristine. This was a perfect boat. You always want to know who's it for. This is for number one. It could be for one guy or one woman who wants to go solo sailing. Bingo. I'm going right to a 65 on this. Oh, wow. Yeah. Woo. That's how nice it is. That whole boat was so nice from stem to stern. You like it better than Firefly? Oh, I knew you were going to do that to me. It's another Ted Hood design. I know. Okay, realistically now, we have to do this. i got to do this. i got to look in the mirror and say, realistically, Captain, what, what boat can you... And I have to say, I'd probably go with this boat. Yeah. Yeah, the 42. Uh, Firefly was fabulous. If I could gather some of the old crew, Firefly might win the, the, the bet, but that's it. What do we give her? 65. 65. I'm sticking with that all day long. All right. Thanks for watching. <laughs>